Okay, um, I'm delighted to be joined this week with um, John, John Davis. How are you doing? Very, very well. How are you? Um, I'm, I'm great. All good for the knowledge that um, you've committed to the Robins for the, for the next season. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty easy decision, to be honest. I think, well, I think to speak for all the players when we think about the last two uh, seasons that there's some unfinished business there and we've got a good group and I think we want to, um, you know, push if we don't win the league, you know, playoffs, that's what we're looking for. And yeah, like I said, unfinished business, so it's an easy decision. Uh, I think you strike me as someone that has a bit more ambition than potentially playoffs. Uh, is, is it going for the league again? Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, I think winning the league is, is what everybody wants. I sort of, yeah, I say playoffs as it's just sort of a backup, just in case we don't win the league. <laughs> I don't want to go and say that we're going to win the league, but that's what we say in the change room. That's what all the players want to do. And that's what the goal is. So that's what we're working for. So you've, um, you've been, you're entering into your sixth season with the club. Um, mm. you're by far and away a, a fan's favourite. Um, I think you know that. Um, <laughs> that a little bit later. But the, um, is it now sort of looking at that sort of legacy that you want to leave at the club as well? And with promotion, would that be something that you kind of want as marking your time here? Um, maybe, yeah. That would obviously be the icing on the cake, if you like. Um, I've played for a lot of clubs, but froome has been the one that I've been most comfortable at by far um, and I felt most at home at. I probably had my best form there because of that. So it's, yeah, it's sort of close to my heart, if you like, in terms of clubs because I do feel so at home there. So to win a league would be perfect. Yeah, I sit on top of the cake. I think you, you, well, I'm not going to tell you about you, but um, you can see that in the stats because I think, was it the four main seasons that we've had sort of running out the last one, you, you've scored over 10 league goals and I think it's over 15 in all competitions, but all four of those seasons in a row. Um, so, yeah, I think it's sort of, uh, you can see that you're comfortable there and, uh, and sort of ploughing. Yeah. Really. No, that's it. Just, yeah, I feel at home there, so. So you kind of mentioned there that you, you obviously you've been at a few clubs before, and uh, I think the one that always seems to um, sort of stand out in the calendar or anything like that is the the AFC Totten game. Um, yeah, it seems to have a sort of special place for you. But I was going to ask, um, what what was the uh, footballing life before AFC Totten? What was your journey before then? Oh well, so I cool, long story. Let's cram this in. I started just playing local football as a kid. I then went and played for Rovers, Bristol Rovers, from nine up to 15. I then didn't get offered uh, a contract going forward from that. So I just went back and played local football. I played for Trowbridge Town and I got lucky. We had a, it wasn't a, like a fixture that was usually in the season, but we went and played Salisbury. And I remember I had a really good game and I scored a couple of goals. And then from there, they ended up, letting me go training with them. I then went and played with them at under 18 reserve level and then they were in the conference at the time. So I got offered uh, a contract with them and played in the conference when I was 18. And it was from there uh, that I got loaned out to AFC Totten. So when I left there, I actually went to Chippenham first, I remember, because they were uh, in the league above. So I tried to push myself. Things didn't work out there, and I ended up going back to Tottenham for a couple of years. And we had a yeah, we, we won this league there. Actually, we had a couple of successful years there, and I think that's why it's uh, that's obviously a special fixture because because we won a league and happy memories for the fans. So obviously during that that time that you've been at the club and obviously away from the club, obviously the notable one was um, your season at. Uh, our kind of local rivals and friendly rivals at Melksham. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to ask you much about your time there. Um, no. This is uh, for the Froome fans, but the, uh, what was it like um, during that time to sort of watch what Froome were going through? Obviously, that was the relegation season that we had. Did it, was it on your mind? Was it something you watched from afar? Yeah, I, I always check the result. Um, and... And it's hard, really, because you know what lo local rivals are like. You know, some of the people there were good, good, they're going down sort of thing. And that, it wasn't really that for me. I obviously didn't want them to go down because I know everybody at the club and it's uh, the club I love playing for at the time. And I didn't leave because I wanted to. There were, you know, there were other reasons and things happened. Um, so, yeah, I never wanted them to get relegated. It was, it was quite a hard thing to, um, to see, but... 
things worked out in the end and I, and I got to come back. So it's time to put it right and, and try and get back up, if you like. Oh, definitely. Well, I was going to say, um, it, it seemed to me, because that was the first season that I, I had the, um, the fortunate... Fortunateness, that's never a word, but we'll use it. No, but we'll um, go with it. We'll go with that one. Um, to watch you that following season. And to me, it seemed like it was sort of beyond the team goal. It seemed a bit of a personal mission for you to kind of say, right, I want to drag this team or not drag it, or just take this team, lead it, score the goals. But you've got over 25 goals, I think, in all competitions that season. Um, it seemed like you just really wanted to say, we're, we're taking this team back up. And to see it yeah. kind of ended so abruptly um how did that feel from your your point of view yeah it, the, the well the ending was awful um because I, I think we all felt that we were on a roll and um well i think we felt we were going to win the league obviously we played against Thatcham, um we beat them and the confidence was high and obviously for it all gets stopped it was such a shame but yeah, coming back, I think I, I, I played a bit further forward than I used to. And I think as I've got older, I've actually just become more and more competitive and I've become a worse and worse loser. And I just, well, yeah, I just hate losing. It ruins my Saturday, it ruins my weekend. Where when I was younger, I probably had more goals on a personal level. Like I wanted to play well and make sure that, you know, I looked good and this and that. Whereas now I'm older, I couldn't really care that much about that. I just want to win. So... Yeah, I was I've definitely got more competitive as I've got older. Yeah, um, I think that that comes in life and comes in age, certainly. I was going to say, I've got a nine year old that's, um, it doesn't matter if they win, lose, or draw. If he hasn't scored that week, um, he's properly in the doghouse. Yeah, just, like, well, I was like that at that age as well. Absolutely <laughs> furious if I didn't score. We could have won 10 0, I didn't care. <laughs> well, sp speaking of goals, really. Um, <sighs> The weird thing is obviously doing this sort of media stuff over the last couple of years. Um, I, I don't have the fortune uh, to go to every game, especially some of the away games. And we'll get the text messages through and it, and it will just say, uh, JD, 25 yards, screamer again. Um, so I just kind of question is, do you, have you ever scored a tap in? Is that um, in your repertoire? Uh, 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 I'm actually trying to get better at, at like getting on the end of things like that. Um, I started out as a winger. Um, that wasn't really my, it was my goal to, you know, put it on a plate for other people. So now I'm going further and further forward. It would be, it, it, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to score more tappings like that because it means I'm in the right uh, position. Like if you look, I play with Kane up front and every time I get the ball wide, I look in the middle and he's there because he's, he's played up front all his life. He knows where to be. And, and that's something that, you know, I want to get like as well. Be on the end of things and just tap it in, yeah. Yeah, God, I'd shudder to see how many goals you'd score if you managed that as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the things that we do notice, obviously, every time you do score, you do seem to kind of wheel out a nice celebration that um, most of our, our cameramen catch. Um, yeah. You seem to have a great relationship with the fans in that way. Do you see it as a kind of little bit of entertainment for them? Or is there someone you're singling out or is it just of the moment? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um... Yeah, every now and then I'll I'll I'll, I'll give the goggles and uh, Luke Ballinger at Melksham, He he originated that, and um, we all, he comes in I, in the gym. I see him a lot, and we have a little bit of banter. And then uh, obviously in the cup, well, two years ago now, I scored and reeled it out, and I looked at him, and uh, yeah, just a little bit of banter between me and him, a little bit of a dig, a little bit of a friendly rivalry there. So, and other than that, yeah, I like. You know, everyone likes the, the ground to be nice and loud. The, the, there's been more and more fans to each game. So, yeah, it's nice to get in, jump in with them when you score a goal and get everyone riled up a little bit. The noisier, the better. <laughs> yeah, well, ho hopefully when we're all back, the, the, the COVID restrictions will be slightly less. and uh, there'll be a, Yeah, we'll be allowed to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> but you can probably join a group of six. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, with with that with that COVID break, not to sort of draw in it too much, but I say um, I hope you don't mind. Obviously, you um, you, go for it. I know what's coming. Yeah, you, you've gone through the thirty mark and now the thirty one mark during this sort of um, two broken seasons. Um, how does that feel? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's good. I, I'd say they they don't count. The last I've had two lockdown birthdays, so by my going, I'm still twenty nine. 
Yeah, well, um, I'd say I've had a lockdown 40th and I'm still 29. It's 12 years exactly. and 29. It's uh, all the same. <laughs> it, gets, it gets quite boring being 29, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting for someone to say that they uh, kind of found the lockdown a, a welcome break in the football area. Um, I suppose if you've been out long-term injured or something, it might be. But um, Yeah, maybe, I suppose. But I think, yeah, for us, it was awful timing. Yeah, maybe absolutely. for those at the bottom of the league, it was all right. Yes, oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. well, we saw that with some of the responses to the leagues, didn't we? Um, yeah. So just staying, going back to Froome, so one of the questions that I've asked um, the fan, uh, so the players on the other interviews is sort of anyone that's sort of coming through in the squad that you're, you're kind of catching your attention that maybe you can see as a, a potentially a young John Davis coming through in that way. Is there anyone that's catching your eye? Um, well, sticking in my position, um, I've got a really good relationship playing up front with Kane and Rex. Um, people forget how young both of them are. And we've played together long enough now that it's, you know, it's almost telepathic. We know where, where each other are going. And every now and then you'll see us playing. We're flicking it around corners, knowing that people are there. Um, and yeah, I suppose you just get that with some players. There's other players who, who you don't get it with, but we're lucky enough. The three of us have clicked and, it's genuinely fun playing up front with those two because we know where each other's going to be and we've all got a little bit of flair to our game as well so we have a bit of fun while we're doing it and and all of us seem to touch wood score a lot of goals so it seems to work um when we spoke to sam he said it was um being captain uh, he must have some sort of leadership skills that set him apart because with players like yourself in the team um <laughs> there's quite a few people knocking on the door to be captain he's got great leadership skills yes is it is it not something that you've um, you've dreamed of or if sam goes off the field for anything are you going to be trying to clasp at the captain's armband or is that uh, to be honest it's, it's actually never been anything that i've been bothered about being um being a captain i think you know, everyone's out there and they've got their responsibilities. And I'm not I'm not that much of a shouter. Like, I'll help people out, um, give advice on the pitch. But when it comes to uh, having that little bit of sort of nastiness and ask people if they're all right and, uh, you know, give them a bit of a rollicking, I don't necessarily have that. Whereas, you know, Sam in that uh, area has got it all. So we <laughs> need that. And he, uh, you know, he leads by example as well. And it, he demands everything from the team. Even when we're training, you get ratty with people if they uh, slip their standards. So, yeah, I'll give him his credit. Good. Good captain. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, um, it just sort of leaves me to say and, and ask if you've got any kind of messages for the fans or anything like that. But it's um, it's such great news to have you back next season. Um, really looking forward to seeing it, especially now that obviously the people we've confirmed so far with yourself, Rex, Kane and, Ta and Sam, um, all geared up and obviously you're, you're aware of more players that we haven't announced yet um, yeah yeah but are you looking forward to the season and say is there a kind of message for the fans at all yeah really looking forward to it obviously before all this happened um, we were getting a lot of fans in there and it was really really loud and I think we were playing some good football which warranted that so we're looking forward to getting back we've got aspirations to you know get promoted one way or another so if we can give them that, they can give us their noise every Saturday and that's all we're asking for. Brilliant. Thanks, John. No problem at all. <laughs>